Imagine for a moment if you could take your control panel out of your CE6000 cutter and somehow place it into your computer as a software application. Essentially, that is what the GraphTech cutting controller does. All the settings that are within the control panel of your CE6000 can be controlled from this software application. There are some additional benefits to this as well. First, rather than having to sift through different menus on the cutter, you can easily access the majority of settings from the controller. Second, you have the ability to set up a multitude of conditions, label them with specific names, and then upload them to the cutter so that you can actually see the label on the cutter's control panel. This makes it easier for seeing what material each condition is used for on the control panel, rather than just condition 1 through 8. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the controller effectively. Let's go over how to install the controller. But before you start, make sure the cutter is turned off. To start, insert the FC8600 DVD into the DVD drive. Click Run Multisetup.exe. You may get this user account control message asking if it is okay to install the multi-setup application. Click Yes. This will open the FC8600 software installation application. Click on the Install FC8600 software button and follow the step-by-step -step process. At this point, the installation program is asking if you'd like to install the FC8600 driver. Click OK. Click Next. And Next again. This will bring up this window that will ask what port will be used to communicate to the cutter. Choose the port you plan to use. In our case, we will be using the USB port. After selecting the port, click Next. Once the driver is installed, click OK. This will bring us back to the main menu. Click Exit. Finally, turn the cutter back on and load the media. Initialize the cutter by pressing the 2 key for Roll 2 on the control panel of the cutter. To make sure that there is communication between the controller application and the cutter, let's send a test cut. Open the cutter controller by clicking on the Start button at the bottom of your PC window. Then click All Programs. Scroll down the list to find GraphTech Cutting Controller for FC8600. Click on the folder, and then click on the application. This will start the Cutter Controller, or Controller for short. When the Cutter Controller window opens, locate in the middle of the window the Test Cut button and click it. Click OK. You should see a little movement from the cutter. Now that we have the controller open and established communication between the controller and the cutter, let's briefly go over the layout of the application. This large section here is where the different tool conditions are shown. Each condition has been assigned a media type. We will be covering media types later in this lesson but suffice it to say that media types contain condition settings that can be labeled. Selecting one of these conditions will display the settings for that condition to the right, in the middle of the window. This includes the tool type, the force, the speed, acceleration, and the offset. As the condition is adjusted within the controller, the adjustments can then be immediately tested by pressing the Cut Test button. Notice the different labels in this list. This is especially useful because, once the conditions in this window are set up, pressing this big red button will upload these conditions in the list to the cutter, and the cutter will have those same condition labels on the control panel. Over on the right hand side are the arrow buttons that function similarly to what's on the control panel. Pressing any one of these will move the tool head in that direction similar to pressing the arrow keys on the control panel. These can be very helpful in that they will save you from having to walk over to the cutter 
just to move the tool head to a new location. Keep in mind that the controller arrow keys on our computer keyboard controls the movement of the tool head as well. Similar to the control panel on the cutter, once the tool head is in its new location, we can press this origin button here and it will set the new start point on the cutter at its current location. We can also have the cutter cross cut the media at its current location. The section in the lower left hand corner has options that will configure the orientation or the rotation of the job. Conveniently there is an actual picture of this orientation to help get a visual of how the job will come out of the cutter. Next to that is the section for configuring the registration marks for print and cut applications. And you'll notice these six buttons reflect the control panel's main menu once the menu key is pressed. Finally, these buttons here will give us help on using the controller, the software version, and options that we can use for the software application. Probably the most powerful feature of the controller is the media list and conditions. The controller allows for 100 different media type presets. Any one of the media type presets in the media list can be assigned to one of the eight conditions on the cutter. Let's first go over setting up individual media types for the media list. First, we'll click on this Edit Media List button to examine all the different media types in the list. You'll notice that there are nine types of media in the current list here. Most of these are common medias that would be cut in a typical sign shop. Take note though that the nine media types may not necessarily be configured to a certain type of media, such as vinyl or reflective, but can be configured for a type of cutting. For instance, notice at the bottom of the list, there is a media type preset for cutting smaller letters. If you look across, there are different columns of settings such as speed, force, acceleration, and blade type for each of the media types. By using the scroll bar below, we can scroll to the right and view the other variables for the selected condition. For instance, we can check if tangential emulation is enabled for that condition or not. The buttons on the far right hand side feature choices of whether we want to create a new media type, edit a media type, delete a media type, and if we want to copy a media type. Let's start by creating a new media type. When creating or editing media types, always load that media into the cutter prior to configuring the media type settings so that a test cut can be performed later. If you notice on our list, we have the media that's labeled outdoor vinyl. Perhaps though, we have two types of outdoor vinyl. So what we'll do here is create a new outdoor vinyl media type and label it with the manufacturer and model type. Then we'll take the current outdoor media type and rename it to reflect the manufacturer and model type. So first we'll click on the new button. That will bring up this small window which allows us to enter the settings for that type of media. The first entry is the name of the media type. In this case the label will be Arlon DPF 4500 GX. This type of vinyl uses a standard blade, the CB09U. We'll set the force at around 14, and the speed will set to a 45. The acceleration will keep the same since it's a standard type of vinyl, and we really don't need to increase or decrease these values. As you recall in the lesson about conditions, Acceleration was useful when you're doing intricate graphics such as smaller characters. In this case though, we'll just be cutting standard letters so we can keep these values the same. Next we can check the settings by pressing the test cut button here. Then after checking the test cut pattern on the vinyl, we can make further adjustments. Or we can just click OK and it will add this media type to our list. Let's now go ahead and take the other outdoor vinyl media type, adjust the settings, and then rename it to the media's manufacturer name and model number. First we select the media type, then we click on the edit button, and here we can make the adjustments. 
In this case, the force is a little too low, so we want to raise it up to about 15 or 16. Next, we'll rename the media type with a manufacturer's name and model number. In this case, we'll call it the Arlon DPF 456 GTX. As you can see, this is a pretty simple process. Let's test these settings by pressing the test cut buttons. There are actually three test cut buttons. The top one will cut the test pattern three times, each with a different force. The middle will cut the test pattern three times, each with a different offset. The bottom one will cut one test cut pattern. In this case, we'll use the bottom one again. If you are new, you may want to use the top test cut button until you get more familiar with the cutter. Let's create another media type specifically for cutting sandblast resist. So we can click on new. We can label it the Hardco Series 300 Sandblast Resist. We will set the blade type to a CB15U K30, which is a blade that is specifically designed for cutting through thicker materials such as sandblast. What this requires though is that we use the 1.5mm blade holder with the red tip as you see in this little window here. By the way, if you don't know what blade type to use, there's this button, About Blades. Clicking on it will open up another window where it gives us a matrix of blade types, blade holders, and their part numbers. Next, we'll set the force to around 25 to start with, the speed at 20, and we'll lower the acceleration to 1 for better handling of the corners. With this type of thick material though, we want to take advantage of some of the other condition settings such as tangential emulation and overcut. To access these settings, use the advance button at the bottom of the window. When this button is clicked, it will reveal the more advanced settings for the conditions. Let's go ahead and enable tangential emulation by setting it to mode 1. In the lessons about conditions, we learn that mode 1 will overcut on each corner, whereas mode 2 will only overcut on the start and end point of each cut element. Let's increase the overcut value to 0.1 for both the start and end points. You'll notice this added setting that we haven't yet discussed distance adjustment. This is a value that corrects any deviation in the length of the cuts or plotted segments. These deviations arise from time to time depending on the media being used. This value is specified as a percentage of the total distance. For instance, if you were to cut a four foot strip and the actual strip measured out a little shorter than four feet, the distance adjustment setting can correct for this. There's not enough time within this video to describe how this works, so if you have issues with this, go to your FC8600 manual, section 7.4, on page 7-13, where it describes what to look for and how this setting can be adjusted. What's nice about this setting is that it can be assigned to a media type, giving the accuracy for that type of media without disturbing the cutter's other condition settings. Finally, let's go ahead and press the cut test button. Check the cut pattern. And if everything checks out, we can click OK. Next, we'll add in a number of different media types that we would like to use. Looking at the media list, you'll notice that there are some media types that have been assigned to a condition. To assign a condition to a media type, first select the media type and then click on the condition number to assign to the media type. Once the media list has been set up with the media types and the condition number that they're assigned to, we can just click close and get back to the main controller menu. Once the media types with their settings are assigned to a condition, these can be uploaded to the cutter. 
This is one of the more powerful features of the FC8600 and its controller. Once clicked, it will then overwrite the cutter's eight conditions. As you can imagine, this is obviously a much more efficient way of setting up the conditions in the cutter. When you are through with this video, we suggest that you open up your controller and set up the media list with all the different medias that your shop uses. This way, for the media types that you use more frequently, you could quickly assign them to their respective conditions and then simply upload them to the cutter. If these six buttons here look familiar, they should be. Recall that when the menu button is pressed in ready mode, this screen appears. These buttons on the controller will allow you to adjust the same settings as found on the cutter's control panel when the menu key is pressed. For instance, if we want to enable sorting, we can press the tool button and click the on radio button to enable sorting. Let's click OK and return back to the controller. If we wanted to expand the area between the wheels, we would click Area and then Expand. Here we have a choice of Default or Set Expand Limit where a value can be entered. As you can see, the controller is as if you have a virtual version of the control panel on your computer.